Muslims vying with one another. Who can hold the better party? Who can hold the most better fireworks? The, the leading record at this moment is held by a Muslim country of letting off the most fireworks on New Year's Eve. Six million dollars spent recently, one Muslim country. Australia toppled it with nine, seven million. Our own country here, when we have homeless people on the streets, the Met is cutting the costs to what they're giving towards the police officers. The NHS is getting squeezed and we're spending 2.3 million on a fireworks display that's going to last not even 10 to 12 minutes. I'm not against people having fun. If you think about a khush molvi yaar. I'm not against people having fun. Fun is separate. We're not talk it doesn't mean you have to do something to disobey Allah for it to be fun. Remember that very clearly. There are a number of things Islam promotes that is allowed, are allowed, recommended and encouraged to do. But where there is absolutely zero benefit, zero fayda, no, what do you get out of that? And with, that's just the fireworks. And then calculate the alcohol nausea that gets drunk and all the drugs that get taken. All this, it topples within the millions. UN released the report. The UN released the report that if only 30 billion, listen carefully, 30 billion, it is not a lot of money. If you look in how much the people were the top richest people in the world, each one of them in the top 10 can alleviate poverty from the, from the world for a year each, each, each of them. I mean, the richest person in the world, Bezos, he can do it for four years. My point of mentioning is this, 30 billion, how much worldwide, globally, on this night is mankind and humankind spending? Let's put Muslim out of the equation for a second. We have a hak to say this. Why? Because the Institute of Zakat was there to alleviate these ahwal from mankind. Whereas if we just took the money we spent on this night, with all the fuzuliyat, and by Allah, you go and hear the statistics, you'd be shocked. Millions and millions just in our local areas, globally, Billions upon billions are being spent. But there is not a global figure to alleviate poverty. Rather selfishness. I want to enjoy myself for a few minutes. That selflessness needs to change into selflessness. What are we actually celebrating? What? Now this is the thing in our community, right? When it comes to occasions like this, they will vie with one another. And I was, subhanAllah, I was coming at my house, literally, wallah. My son will tell you if you don't believe, ask him afterwards. We're just coming out, and opposite the road, someone's popping off some fireworks. So the lady stops, she goes, She takes out her phone and takes a quick couple of snapshots. Now the kid's only five years old, six years old. Now listen carefully, we're not here to judge anybody. We're not here to make people feel like they're worthless. But what impression are we putting on that child's mind? When a Muslim pays attention to those things which are questionable, borderline impermissible, and at times very impermissible, then what happens is that in the psychology of that child, it's accepted because mum and dad said it was okay. Mum and dad used to celebrate it. Mum and dad thought it was good. They would take us to go and see the displays. And then we complain 15 years later that the children are off their deen. It's not one issue that occurs. It's a number of different things. The biggest issue we have in our youth, in this country, in our country, is identity crisis. People don't know whether they're Asian, they're African, they're Muslim, they're what? They don't know. Our thing, forget culture to the side. I say this with a passion and a vengeance. I say kick culture to the side. Culture caused the problem, Islam will be the solution. Let me say that again. Culture is the what? The problem. Islam is the solution to the problem. All these marriage breakups we have, 99% are because of culture, not because of the deen. The Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned خيركم 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 The best of you is best of you who is to his wives. What dunya did he give his family? Tell me. When the wives, they got together and made this plan that we're going to ask him for more. He was so upset, he separated himself for 29 days, even completely naraz. So he, was he furnishing their homes with Italian this and ensuite bathrooms and every year new car and international holidays? This wasn't even in existence. But what made him a good husband? It was the akhlaq. Islam showed akhlaq. We're providing for our families to an extent. When I say to an extent, because a lot of the times it's our own selfish needs. I'm working 14 hours a day, Monasa, because I'm buying properties in Pakistan. Brother, your kids are from here. They're growing up here. Let them go back one or two much bite them. They're coming back. Lord shedding, they're not going to sit in four hours in the heat. You've got to think forward for here. You know, those of you who have children, you take your youths. They come back, we ask them, how did you like your holiday? I hated it. 
We asked the children, how did you find your holiday? I hated it. I wanted to come back. So we have to think out of the box. And I'm sorry if this comes across as crude. That I'm upsetting the status quo. But the reality is this, that when you instit if you bring deen into your families, deen, Islam, they will love Islam. But when we're bringing culture into our thing, some things are okay. Some things are within the boundary of deen and for that we accept. But those things which are blatantly, flamboyantly, openly, disgracefully against the deen, our marriages, let me not even open up another subject. Our marriages are breaking, as I said, what? Generally, a lot of the time because of cultural issues. Cultural issues.